What, what is the sex next? What sex next? Is it a car? Is it a kind of book? What is it? Mm. It's a car. It was a kind of what? Um, I don't know how it's correct. The shop way would rent a car for time. <laughs> Not not here. Um, uh, that's not to say it's not possible. According, uh, according to the dictionary, sex next is a kind of uh, sex is a Mexican cuisine. Cuisine or food, yes. Um, and it's the kind of food you can get in Texas that has a very Mexican flair. So tacos and refried beans Rebirth. and... And I think Professor Lero at some point will share some pictures with us of Tex-Mex. And so now I'll go back to the question, if this is a kind of food, Katya, what kind of business do you think this is? I have just an idea that you could rent a car, but I don't know what, why road piece and how it connects with the tex -Mex. Yeah, that's sort of a little weird, isn't it? So yeah. if, if Tex-Mex says that this is a restaurant, now you're trying to figure out how world peace is connected. Well, maybe in this restaurant uh, work in Mexicans and <laughs> this <laughs> restaurant in Texas. Yeah, so it, it is a, a maybe it's a practicing, a practical example of world peace. Or maybe it's just a, a, a funny saying, you know. Um, will will food bring us world peace? Probably not. But this restaurant would have you believe that you can, if you eat more Tex-Mex, everything will be better, uh, better in life. So it's it's a little weird, exactly right, um, and it's hard to make the connection. This is actually a sign outside a restaurant in Austin, Texas, where Professor Lero lives. So if you eat more Tex-Mex, uh, you'll help with uh, world piece. And if you click on Tex-Mex 2 on the tab, you can see the whole picture, the whole sign. Can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it is a restaurant, and actually the rest of the sign does say restaurant. And, um, and in Spanish, the restaurant is called El Mercado, Rinic, the market, right? Um, and it has those birds, right? So I liked your guess, Katya, early on that maybe it was a pet a pet store. Um, it's uh, it, it's actually a, a restaurant. If y'all could click on the tab that says y'all, the tab says y'all. Can you see the sign on the on the stone wall there? Mm -hmm. Okay, why don't you go ahead and read that sign to me. Okay, you all come back. Right, so when you leave that restaurant, this might be a sign mm -hmm. asking you to do what? Uh, you, you all come back. You all come back, right? Yeah. You read it very nicely. You said y'all. And where in the United States would people say y'all? Where in the United States? Yeah. Yeah, it's like reference to y'all. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's Afro-American. It, it, it could be, and it's actually associated with a particular geographic area. Um, here, okay. here in Texas, um, this is you, you hear this all the time. 
my daughter who grew up in Texas says this all the time. Y'all want to help me? Come on, y'all. Um, <laughs> now, you translated it. If you were speaking very carefully and very precisely, you would say, you all come back. Okay. But by putting that little bit of twist on it, y'all come back now, you hear? Um, this is heard very commonly in Texas and very commonly in the south uh, of all of the United States, in Louisiana and Georgia and Mississippi and Alabama, uh, and a little bit in Florida. Um, we have this particular accent or style where we would use the word y'all. Okay. Now, Professor Marston lives in Iowa. Do you ever hear y'all in Iowa, Professor Marston? No, only on Tuesday mornings. Only on Tuesday when you get to talk <laughs> to Professors Lero and Smith. In um, in Iowa and in Oregon and other parts of the north, people are going to say, you guys. You guys. To refer to yeah, second yeah. person, right? Yeah, second yeah. person plural, yeah. right? All of you. There's got to be a plural. There's got to be more than one. A, yeah. lot of, a lot of people in Massachusetts were speaking like this. Yeah. You guys, you guys. <laughs> right. Even even if it's two girls, right? Yeah. You can say, what do you guys think? And you guys. I, hear, I, I hear people say that to a group of girls, right? What do you guys think? And there's no guys there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the evolution of the language. And a yeah, a development of the language. So the the deeper point is that there are all flavors and forms of English, right? So Vlad, you spent some time up in the Northeast. Um, that would be Maine and Massachusetts and maybe New York. But New York has its own special accent as well especially New York City. Sometimes you will hear youth. Youth, in, yeah. No, it's a, it's a sibilant as. Really? Youth, youth. Youth, and even youth guys. Youth guys. And that might be the Bronx. The Bronx. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Vlad, you spent time in the Northeast, right? Yeah. Where were you? Tell tell us where you were again. Were you in Were you in Boston? Uh, in Keiko. Kirby and I, yeah. uh, we were in the, mostly we we were in Keiko, and uh, sometimes we were in uh, New York, uh, Boston, a little bit. Uh, well, so you were all over what we would call the Northeast, right? The Northeast portion of the United States. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. And did you have some problems with accent? Did some of the speakers in Boston uh, sometimes it yes. difficult to understand them? Yeah, sometimes uh, I ask it to, to repeat because uh, sometimes it was very lonely and uh, not very clear to understand. Uh, yeah. And and I realize that uh, in every region has uh, the same uh, specific of accent. Yeah. So in Boston. Um, they play with their vowels, Baston, right? Mm -hmm. um, if somebody has a, a, a pre stoop, it's a had attack, right? Not a heart attack, yeah. <laughs> but a had attack. Professor Marston, how is your, your Boston accent? Oh, I can't. <laughs> I, I cannot I'm, go I'm, there. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. Um, I, the only thing that comes to mind is Harvard Yard. Harvard Yard, right? When you're in Harvard Yard, 
um, they the, that a that vowel a in in, in the dialect. And the the official phrase we would use is we call that a dialect. Um, uh, Sergey or, or Vlad, did you find New York City in particular to be very challenging for their accent? Oh no, no, no. Ah, okay. We we were in New York just four days. Okay. We just speak with uh, Chinese guys, <laughs> and, and, and with in, in McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Ah, in McDonald's and with with other speakers of other languages. Yeah. Uh, very yeah. nice. Yeah. Very nice. Well, one of you mentioned that Texas has its own dialect, and it does. And I'm going to go ahead and play a little clip for you of a Texas accent. So, Sergey and Vlad, you did not come to Texas, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, no Texas visit. No Texas. No, no Texas. Texas. Okay. Um, in Texas, if you had come to Texas, you would have heard people. dialectical uh, phrases or phraseology or style. Can you all see the video picture of the lady wearing the blue dress and, with the big white? And will everyone please mute their mic while the video is playing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and mute your mic. Does anybody recognize who she is before we start? Who, does anybody know who this is? Oh. Her name is uh, Ann Richards was Ann Richard. She has passed away. She was the governor of the state of Texas, and she was a very important figure on the political stage. And this is a little clip from when she gave a very important speech in 1988 to a very large political convention. And she got up and talked about the values and beliefs of the uh, Democratic Party. This is one of the two major political parties. We talked about the Democratic and Republican Party last semester. And I wanted you to hear her speak because she has just a wonderful Texas accent. So go ahead and mute your microphones, please, and I will play about one minute of Ann Richards and listen to her accent. Um, she is speaking English, um, but she's speaking it with a very Texas accent. So remember, she is the former governor of Texas. So listen to her accent, and let's see how much we understand.
Katya, uh, did you find her understandable? Could you understand what she was saying? Yes. Tell me some of what you heard. Mm -hmm. Katya. <laughs> she uh, laughed at George Bush accent. Yeah, she oh, laughed Bush. at George Bush's accent. Uh, do you know a little bit about that story? Mm, no, it's all. Well, uh, George Bush, the senior, right? Not the younger one, the senior. Yeah, I understood that. <laughs> you know, they were all born in the Northeast, right? So where Sergey was and where Vlad was, they were born up in the Northeast. They're very, um, we would call them aristocratic. But they moved to Texas and became maybe residents of Texas, but Texans don't think they're very Texan. And during the presidential race that year, there was some question as to whether George Bush was really a Texan or not. And so Ann said, you needed to hear what a real Texas accent sounds like. Um, and could you hear her accent, Katya? How did it sound very different to you than the accents you'd heard before? Uh, to, be, if, to be honest, no, not so much. Because, yes, I, I, I hear that she said A a lot in all the uh, world. Uh, she say uh, A. I don't know how to yeah, yeah, and and part of how you make an accent is what you do to your vowels, and her A's are very prominent. Yeah, um, Constantine, when you were listening to her, could you understand her? Um, no, I uh, I have a bit understand. Only Just a little bit. Buena, buenos noches, amigos. <laughs> Yeah, so she's she's from Texas. So in in her political world, many people speak Spanish. So she will say good evening. I'm delighted to be here. And then she also wanted to say some words in Spanish. And did you hear any other themes, uh, Constantine? No, I. I have uh, understand what she love um, for Bush accent. She mentioned uh, mention, she mentions Barbara Bush, and uh, I don't uh, I don't remember what she said. And, and she actually mentions Barbara Jordan. Well, this is an interesting name that it, that you almost certainly will not know. She was another Texas politician, um, very famous. She was African American. She has also passed away. And, and Richard says, I'm only the second woman in 160 years to give this speech. So she's very, very, she's making an important statement that usually it's men who give this important speech at the convention and that Barbara Jordan gave it 12 years ago and now she gives it. And then she says, but two women in 160 years is about par for the course. You what, uh, what? Could you repeat? Yeah, she said, two women in 160 years uh -huh. is about par for the course. Is about par for the course. And what sport does uh -huh. that reference? Does anybody recognize? Where would you talk about a course and whether you shot par? What sport is that about? Golf. Golf, golf, golf. golf yeah. yeah. Who's, who was that, Sergey? Yeah. Yeah, Sergey, what's par in, in the game of golf? If you if you shoot par or make par, uh, what are you doing? So, par, uh, 
if I'm if I'm not mistaken, bar it's a minimum. Yeah, it's it's like minimum. It's, it's, it's the, the target score, right? Yeah, so yeah, exactly. maybe a golf hole, a hole of golf will be a par three. Yeah. Then. And you want to make it in three shots. Yeah, yeah. Um, you might make it in two. You might make it in one. But most people will make it in three, and that's par. And that's yeah. normal. Uh, it's the goal. So she says that's about par. That's about right. So she's saying... You know, hey, wake up, America. In 160 years, you've only let two women give this speech. And maybe that needs to change. And then at the very end, she mentions Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Um, we're going to find out who our fans of old movies are. Does anybody recognize those names? Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Who recognizes those two names? Maybe you've seen them in a movie or a clip. Sound familiar to the Yeah, if you if you okay. check them, go ahead. I I just wanted to point out that if you're looking at the chat, you can see some transcriptions. Yeah, Fred Astaire, and their names are spelled a little bit differently, so they're hard to find. They were a very famous set sure. of actors and singers, but more importantly, they were a dancing team. A man and a woman who dance together very famously and very artistically. And Ann Richards points out, remember that when two people dance, a man and a woman, usually one is the lead and the other one has to dance a little backwards, right? You take the lead, but you, you're not facing both in the same way. So Anne says, remember that Ginger Rogers did everything that Fred Astaire did, but she did it backwards. And she did it in high heels, although when Anne says it, it comes out. Can you say it, Professor Marston? You do it better than I do. High heels. Um, so Ginger Rogers did everything Fred Astaire did, but she did it backwards, and she did it in high heels. What are high heels, anybody? It's a part of, part of shoes. Type of shoes, right? Um, and and depending on your age. Yes, so the... The heel, the heel is the bottom part of the shoe, right? And in a high heel shoe, you know, the, the heel makes the back of the shoe very tall. Uh -huh. And they get very high, right? Three or four or five or six inches tall. Um, and so she's pointing out that of this pair, the Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire pair, um, you know, Ginger Rogers had to dance just like Fred Astaire did, just as artistically as Fred Astaire did, but she had to dance backwards, and she had to dance wearing these very difficult shoes. Mm -hmm. And so her point is, of course, that um, it she was perhaps the better dancer than he was because she had these additional challenges um, that, that Fred Astaire didn't have. Let me go ahead and play this clip once more and we'll try once again to listen to what, what Governor Richards is saying and see if you can understand a little bit more the, the second time through. So I'll play that first clip once more again. Go ahead and mute your mics again. OK. 
Okay, here we go. Constantine, what do you think? Was it a little more to understand in the second time through? Mm, it's a bit cleaner, but not at all. What was one so, area that you're, was still a little difficult for you? I don't, uh, don't understand exactly about convention. And, uh, ah. Uh, I may have to draw on Professor Marston here uh, to help talk about the convention. Oh, right. um, the convention refers to the, the um, Democratic National Convention, and the Republicans have one too. It is a nominating convention that convenes or gets together every four years. And that is for the purpose of nominating a candidate for president. And um, so it's uh, it usually happens in July or August. And uh, representatives of the party are chosen from all over the country and they go to a big city and the person who gives the keynote speech is not almost never the person they think they're going to select for president. It's maybe someone they thought it would be interesting to have talk and to try out what they might be like for the next president. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a little context about the uh, the convention, and um, they used to be maybe more important than they are. Oh, I see Fred Astaire on the so stage. So while while Professor Marson was talking, I I brought us Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, I believe. Um, can everybody see the black and white film here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I'll just play a little clip. I believe this is from a movie called Swing Time. Fred Astaire is in the tuxedo with the flower in his lapel, and I believe that's Ginger Rogers coming in. And these films were very famous for the fact that they would just break into dance um, in the middle of the film. Not, not a very popular genre. Uh, anymore, but I'll play a little clip of it. I've not seen this one, so I hope they dance. Okay, um, mute, mute. Go ahead and mute everybody your microphones, please. Okay, here we go.
I think everybody gets the sense of it. And so when Governor Richards says Ginger Rogers did everything Fred Astaire did, right, they're both very talented dancers, but she did it backwards. And there on her feet, you can see she's wearing high heels um, as she's uh, doing her dancing. Professor Marston, did you watch these films? Oh, yeah. Oh, In yeah. your youth? <laughs> In my childhood, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and my, uh, my parents, for a while, um, managed a dance hall where all the big bands came. Um, and I think that was uh, in the 40s. That might have been before I was born. And they loved to dance. And so these, this couple particularly was kind of the ideal dance couple. Does Russia have any equivalent to Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers? So this would have been about the 1940s or 1950s, possibly. I, I'm not 100% sure of the year. Katya, um, would there be any equivalent in, in the Russian context that you know? I don't know if they were. I don't know this time. I'm guessing seven. Partly the 1940s would be a very different period for the Soviet Union, right, with, uh, with wartime. Uh, Konstantin, do, were there any famous singing and dancing couples in, in Russian films that, that you know of? Mm, Maybe 18. Maybe. Yeah, uh, Lubov Farlova and, uh, and her partners, she has many partners, Cherkasov and uh, uh, Matveev, I don't know the name of that. Uh, I... So her name is Lubov Farlova? Uh, Lubov Farlova, it's a famous Russian actress. She. Uh, she starred in uh, Volga Volga, Volga, all the Russian films from the uh, 13th. And uh, her last film was uh, Spring, something about 50 years. So a very long she, career, and she, she's, yeah. she's strong, she danced, and uh, like uh, Ginger. Like Ginger Rogers. And so I was seen, seen there, well, but uh, I don't remember, mixed it par, mixed it couples. Only two, two fellows or two girls. Uh, ah. Singers. Okay. So she was very famous for for her um, her partnership the, with different actors. I, I remember that uh, one uh, couple of uh, dance dancing uh, two men two fellows mm -hmm. uh, escaped in USA. Um, so they defected. Uh, huh? Yeah. Defected. Um, it was a very, very funny um, I don't know, play in mm -hmm. Russell Theater uh, when uh, he, uh, when the pupil, uh, when Abrasov asked us uh, the spa like a pupil. It was very funny. Maybe you see, you you have seen this um, this play, необыкновенный концерт, unusual concert. Mm -hmm. It was very popular. It's a song in Russian. 
and and I'm hard pressed to think Professor Larson of another artistic couple like this throughout even U.S. films or any coming to mind for you? Mm, no, these were the best. There were some famous dancers, but nothing like these. Yeah. Cherise was famous as a dancer. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. Not you say you say Fred Astaire, then you have to say Ginger Rogers. Right. They're so tightly bound together. Uh, Vlad had written in the chat that you almost don't know dancers at all. Was was this a uh, Vlad? Was this a genre? Musicals would be another genre. Um, could you were musicals popular in the Soviet Union or Russia, Vlad? Sorry, please can you repeat? Yeah. So another related genre might be called musicals, um, films that have songs in them. Maybe not dancing, but certainly songs. Um, is, is that a genre that was popular in Russia, Vlad or Sergei? Everything uh, was, uh, almost everything was uh, were in the Soviet uh, Union still popular in life because uh, a lot of people uh, remember all time and uh, have a nostalgic memory about the uh, previous time and uh, I think uh, a lot of uh, things what the uh, Soviet Union left for for our generation is uh, the best. Uh, I mean, uh, for example, uh, Films. Because uh, uh, Soviet films uh, still uh, the uh, the best uh, movies, especially comedy. Generally. And so it really gets to that nostalgia, and, right? Yeah, uh, and I I personally like a lot of uh, Soviet films. I'm sorry, you broke up there. You said you do like to look at Soviet films? Yeah, I personally like a lot of uh, Soviet films, especially comedy. And yeah. what would be what would be some names of famous Soviet films that um you might that we might know about or you might tell us about? What 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 would be a very famous Soviet film you know? Um a lot of films, uh, let me see this one. Uh, uh, for example, uh, Ivan Vasilyevich, меня это российский. Ivan Vasilyevich, change his job. Can Ivan Vasilyevich? Ivan Vasilyevich, меня это российский, in English, I guess. Ivan Vasilyevich, change his job. No, no. Yeah, changes yeah, his occupation. Tell us yeah. about that film. Or Professor yeah. Marston will not know that film, so can you tell us a little bit about that? I guess this film will know in, uh, in a foreign country like uh, Ivan Vasilyevich, Back to the Future. <laughs> ah. And what, about, you know? about what year was it made? What What year did the film come out? Uh, it's about... Uh, 18, maybe. Eighteen seventies, I think. Ends of ends of seventies, seventies. Yeah. So still in the Soviet time. Yeah. And what was the plot? What 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 was the basic story? <laughs> uh, one. <laughs> yeah, it's one uh, young uh, scientist invents the time machine, and uh, and his friends. Uh, uh, turn out uh, in the in the time of uh, Ivan Ivan Grozny. Ah, <laughs> in the star, yes. In the star time. His friends look like Ivan Grozny, so uh, yeah. people in that times in the times of Ivan Grozny thought that 
uh, the man of, from the future is the Caesar. Caesar. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So, so Ivan Grozny from Professor Marston is Ivan the Terrible. Oh. Yeah. So going back to the 15th, going back to the 15th century. Yeah. And all of you are smiling, or I can hear you thinking about this film. You're sort of yeah. laughing. Is it? It's is wonderful it, was it a, film. Was it, was, it, was it a comedy? Yes. Yeah. It's a film. It's a, uh, I don't know how to say. It's a classic. Film of our childhood. It's a classic. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, frequently we would say a classic. Um, you know, something that many of you grew up with. And in fact, I know we're going to have you do some subtitling or captioning. Uh, that might be a very good film to work on, you know, um, mm -hmm. the, to go back and find a classic clip or a, a classic piece. Uh, Katya, can you tell us about a favorite film you have from Soviet time? Of course, Ivan Vasilyevich, me and Professor. I don't know how to also, translate. Also that one, huh? And Приключения uh, Шурика, Adventure of Shurika. I don't know. Oh, tell Maybe. Professor Marston about that film. She has not ever seen that one. Um, this film has uh, several sides. To that is called. It have a several parts of the film. Yes, yes, it is all. Um, several subplots or episodes. Yes, it is all. So in one of them, a young man, she, he is a student, and he prepared to to exams. And uh, he uh, started to read the book of a young girl that uh, stand near here in the bus. And uh, she, uh, he prepared so hard that he don't uh, understood that he go to her home and uh, they read this book all evening and then they back to the university and uh, um, and it's it's also a comedy, right? Yes, it's comedy. Yeah. Constantine, do you have a favorite film uh you can tell us about? Mm, I don't know, but uh we we mentioned uh some film of director Gaidai, and I like him very much too, especially uh, Twelve Chairs. Yes, tell oh, yes, Twelve Chairs. Tell, uh, Professor Marston knows that one. To hit on one one of the few Russian films I know something about. <laughs> <laughs> And I've brought one clip before we leave this topic. We were talking about musicals. And I thought I'd bring a clip from South Pacific. This is a very famous musical um, in the United States about uh, some sailors in the South Pacific, right, in the Pacific Ocean during, I think, World War II. And this is a musical, so I'll just play a little bit of it, but you'll see that they have some dialogue and some plot, and then they just start singing in the middle of it. Don't forget to mute. And we'll get everybody to mute their mics. And I thought, uh, Professor Marston, that because of our theme today with Ann Richards, I'd pick the clip where she thinks I want to wash that man right out of my hair. <laughs> Let me play this as an example of a musical.
buffer it. A scandalous movie, anyway, because uh, she takes a shower. And the video, I think, is lagging a little bit for some of you in Russia, but she's she's singing, I'm going to wash that man right out of my hair. So clearly she doesn't want to continue the relationship with whatever man is involved here. But this is a very famous musical um, from, as I said, either the, the 50s or 60s or 70s, uh, probably 50s or 60s, I'm guessing. And there's some dialogue and some plot, and then all of a sudden they just break into songs. Professor Marston, do you have a favorite musical? I have lost audio on you, Professor Martin. Um, It's there. probably Camelot. Camelot. It's another famous musical in the United States. About and that, that's probably the mid-50s. Yeah. And it's King about Ar King Arthur's court and its downfall. It's, uh, it's pretty funny in a lot of ways, and it has its tragic moments, of course. Our assignment for this week, we've got about five or eight minutes left here, um, was to work on finding a clip either of a television show or movie and working on transcribing it and doing captions for it. Have any or all of you had a chance to work on that assignment yet? No. Uh, who was that, Sergey? Yes. Right. Yes, it's, it was that. We worked, uh, yeah, we we worked, worked, uh, worked. worked together. Yeah. yeah, we worked together. Okay, good. And do you have a sample you can show us today? Of course. All right, I'm, I'm going to pass the control to you, Sergey. Uh, I have this video in my blog, so how do I can share it? Yeah, we worked in uh, um, dot up. Ah, did it in dot up? Okay. Yeah. Um, can you paste the URL maybe to us, or you could screen share it? Can you share your screen? Oh. Maybe let help me. No. Okay. So under Could share, you. there's oh, my okay, desktop. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah. and then you can you can yeah. go to your blog and yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Can you see? Yes, we can see your beautiful scene. Ah, there it is. Ah, you guys did Urovsky at El right? Yeah, right. All right, explain this show to Professor Marston and I. Um, what is it about? Is it skits like this one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a famous Russian uh, Russian show, comedy show. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like sketch. Uh, this this guy's uh, short and sketch, short story in a case in a different in a different situation in life. In oh, the, yeah, but very popular and uh, important uh, issue uh, of society. And in my mind, it's uh, really the best uh, humor show of what we have in Russia today. And would you? It, um, when you were in the United States, did did you both watch Saturday Night Live? Have you heard of this TV show? Actually, no. Mm -hmm. It it may be something like Saturday Night Live. It's sketch comedy, right? Little skits, little uh, sketches. It's not little. It's not little sketches. It's like I don't know how to. Both English, but in Russian, 
it's a general call spam, you know? It's like... What, what, what? What did you say? Spam. Spam. It's like Kazan. I don't know if yeah. you talked about Kazan in Russia. Uh, young uh, people from uh, university playing this game. Yeah. It's a lot it's of time, 15 years. It's a former team of uh, Kazan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they make uh, one and a half hour performance. And during this performance, they um, make uh, a lot of political um, yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Jokes or, or yeah, yeah, jabs. And what does the name of the show mean? I know what Pelmienli are. Uh, can you explain the name of the show to Professor uh, uh, Marston? Uraiski, it's from Oral Mount, you know. Ural Mountains, yeah. Yes. Uh, this team from Yekaterinburg, from, from Ural Mountain. Because, like, Oraiski is in the meaning. And so, what is the significance of Pelmienli? What? Why it's is that a, a title? It's, <laughs> it's a popular Russian food. Food. Yeah. I yeah. Think. Sort of. Uh, sort of like uh, ravioli. Yeah, like ravioli. Yeah. Bread <laughs> around. Yeah. And so, what? What is the significance here? Why? Why is that the title of this television show? Because. Uh, this guy's place in, in Kaven. It's yeah, Kaita explained it's a Pumba it's a Pumba Pumba Pumba. Uh, yeah, it's a student a humor student game. But uh, this team calls Oraski Pinimini and when when the winner of Kaven uh this guy starts to make a show on TV it's called like like team Oraski Pinimini. Ah, okay, okay. Well, why don't you go ahead and play the the clip for us? Okay. Sorry, I wor I worry about uh, about her. Maybe you can't hear the voice. I don't know. It's so. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Tudo. Tá na missão que ele ensina a dizer, né? Ele disse, não, não, não. Ah, se ele ia 